I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Well, do you hear that music in the background, Brandon? I, yes, and... (laughs) because we can't get a copyright strike i don't want to get a copyright strike um so have you seen the fucking video game awards and the fact that sephiroth is in smash brothers now no what i didn't even know they happened wait vga what is happening yeah, so Sephiroth is in Super Smash Brothers now, apparently. And he already damn near killed Princess Zelda and Mario. What? In his intro. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. So... Oh yeah, no. It's it's th- the weirdest thing I've ever seen. All right. Uh Super Smash Bros on a trailer. Yeah, Sephiroth wow. is in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Dang, I've he also my Switch. <laughs> uh, well, you had to pay for him, but oh. uh, he also speaks in Japanese as well. That's uh, fine. I don't have any, any issue with that. No, 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 no. It, it's it's funny because he's because my it has my single favorite line that I have ever seen. Yeah. For anything, um, so I I linked you the, uh, at minute. I fuck. I didn't send you the current time. Uh, one second. Uh, it's at <laughs> minute one o. It's one o four that it starts. Gotcha. All right. Click. I love the sound of the click or the click when the switch controller goes on on their video ads. Yeah, yeah. What do you say? One o four. One o four. One o four. So, I've been waiting um, for this moment. Now I shall give Smash despair. That is my favorite <laughs> line ever. That is such a 2020 aesthetic right there. That is. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is 110% a 2020 aesthetic. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah. So now... um. Now I guess you can have all the fights between Sephiroth and Cloud you ever wanted. I I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I I it was a weird it was a weird uh week of video game news cuz like Cyberpunk finally came out. That I I'm um, sad to say cuz I used to be huge into to games. Um I'm still I still I like video games. I have all of the things, but I just feel like 2020 I've gotten disconnected with things where I saw cyber yeah. cyberpunk came out but I, I I I what what is that <laughs> So basically it's based off of uh I think it was originally an RPG system or a book can't remember off the top of my head um but ba- so cyberpunk you know remember Shadowrun Yeah So Shadowrun is something that's cyberpunk right Yeah um and it's usually like uh, neon future, gritty, yada yada yada. Corporations rule everything. Ba 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 ba. Um, origins of cyberpunk are rooted in new wave. Ba, ba, ba. Um, comics exploring cyberpunk began as early as Judge Dredd. So, like Judge Dredd is cyberpunk. Okay, I like Judge um, Dredd. Neuromancer is cyberpunk. Uh, Netrunner is cyberpunk. Blade Runner is cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, so basically the whole like notion of it is that, and like cyberpunk is the OG thing. Right. Um, so there's a lot of transhumanism stuff. My, I think my advisor actually 
might be in the credits for that game as like a offering some feedback on um uh like transhumanism and stuff along those lines because yeah. he's an hci guy um but yeah it, it's it's a pretty cool concept but i also am not going to be spending 70 dollars on a game right now <laughs> yeah that's kind of why like i feel like we're in the same boat where we're just not going to be spending money on game we'll spend some money on games but not like uh, 20 bucks is increasingly becoming my limit for what I'll spend on a game. Yeah, like uh, like especially mainly mainly because I don't have a incredibly stable source of income right now. Yeah. Well, I still 70 I don't have the time that I used to have to like sit down and cuz $70 is a really good value for a game that you're going to put a lot of time into. But yeah. I don't have that much time as a resource right now. So I'm more looking at like Warzone and Phasmophobia and that type of game. I'm not going that much towards the, uh, you know, the 300-hour game or what have you. I mean, I'm going to get the next uh, Elder Scrolls whenever it comes out, regardless of the yeah. amount of time I have, because con- contractually I'm obligated to. Um, you are. The amount of time you put into Elder Scrolls Online requires you to play every Elder Scrolls game. Oh, yeah. By by law. You put too much... You you put so much time into, that, into Elder Scrolls Online that you legally are compelled to play every Elder Scrolls game. You know, game. The, the only reason I haven't played yet is because... Or in, in a little while is because I'm sure they put an update out. Uh, or several out. Yeah, you but, can go to Skyrim now. Um, you can go to more of Skyrim now. Yeah. I... I don't know if their system allows you to... Because it used to be every time there was an update, they would erase all of your uh, points that you put into all of your abilities. Yeah, they still do that. Yeah, so I don't want to put forth the effort to rebuild a character. And while in the past I looked at that as a free version of the ability point like thing, because you used to have to pay for it, and then every update you'd get the chance to like mix your points up... I don't, yeah. I just don't. I had a great character. I don't remember well, all, you know, how many hundreds of points I put into what abilities. <laughs> you had a great character for that update. It is a very well-rounded character. Even after they nerfed the uh, nerfed it, it, it was still very well-rounded. Yeah. Um. So, not to derail, but you mentioned Phasmophobia, Brandon. Yes. I I feel like I feel like we should make a web series of us playing Phasmophobia because your reaction while playing Phasmophobia is probably the funniest thing in the world. I don't play scary games, but I do Which, very much enjoy Phasmophobia. I'm so confused by that, Brandon, cuz when we were in when we were younger, Doom 3 was like your favorite game for a long time. It was, but do you want to know what my trick was? Game. I played what? Doom 3. I got it before it came the week before it came out because it was EB Games at the time received it and they just called uh-huh. called my dad when it came in and they're like, it's here. So I had it the week before it came out. I played it with the sound off and the gamma turned way up. Oh, okay. It, it was a good game. I liked it. That but explains it. That that's explains, how you, I have to play scary games. Sound off, also, gamma up. You also love horror movies. I love horror movies, but I'm experiencing them through a different person. When I play a okay. video game, I am the person experiencing the things. So, uh, I don't know how aware you were of this while we were playing, but half of the stuff that was happening to you was me doing it. <laughs> I assume that because you die, so you no, die and then fuck with me. Is it, that the whole thing? Well, no, it wasn't that I was dying while I was still alive. So remember the time that we made you do the. So I'm gonna post a link to this the the vod that Clay made of this. Okay. Um, and I'm actually gonna post a link to his stream because he plugged us on his stream. So I'm gonna plug him on his stream on the podcast because whatever. Um. And, uh, the, um, when, when you were like, there's something scream, there's something breathing in my ear or doing the thing. That was me almost every single time. No. Are you serious? Yes. That was me. (sighs) I was in the house most of that time without a flashlight, Brandon, 
without a flashlight in the pitch darkness making noise. I was opening and closing doors. I was making a whole no. mess of noise. Yes, That's- that was me. Just the dark and... Do- oh, that was the part that messed with me the most. Like, knowing that the there's doors. a ghost around and it just, you know, like, squeak, thump. I'd be like, oh, fuck, they're right there. And I just, every time, just so you know, every time I do, you did that, I, like, crouched in a corner and turned off my flashlight to hide. <laughs> Brandon, I was, it was me for a very solid portion of that. Just <sighs> totally messing with you and using the cover. Like, I actually killed the power to the house, too. I don't know if you noticed that because I don't think you really turned lights on. But I, I killed the power don't. to the house so you couldn't turn the lights on as well. No, I don't turn the lights on ever because I'm. this is like how I use potions in Pokemon. I know there's a limited number of lights you can use before the breaker switches, and I don't want to go and turn it back on. So I never turn on any lights in case I need to turn on a light in the future. Which, speaking of those houses, those are really nice ha- Some of those houses are really nice. Like, yeah. the road houses are, like, really nice. Not the farmhouses. I don't like those as much. But, you know, there's a bunch of axe murderer shit in there, so who cares? Um, those are some nice houses that have terrible electrical panels. Oh, they're electrical as shit. <laughs> like, really bad panels. Like, terrible, terrible panels. It also takes like, up most of the wall? Yeah, they don't need, they don't need a ghost hunter... They need an electrician in those houses. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> they need to kick you out and call an electrician. I mean, our rates are are reasonable though, because mm-hmm. like, I, I've never made more than like a, a hundred to two hundred dollars on a night. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, we don't exercise anything, but whatever. No, we just collect data and then run. We, we just tell them well and what will kill them and then leave. Some of us collect data, and some of us run and hide in a corner for half an hour. I've taken pictures of things. Yes, and I've I've said, said rooms are cold. I I, I contribute. I contribute. No, I do was, ride the was, coattails of other more experienced players to bankroll it, all of the things I'm going to lose in the house. Well, the thing is, you you have you on that one night you killed me three times. I am like basically a, a fresh recruit now in phasmophobia I, because i bankrolled you something and you listen all right you held the door shut and killed me brandon um anywho <laughs> so this is cryptopedia uh it's a storytelling podcast i guess I, I don't know. History podcast it's not an advice podcast because if this was no. an advice podcast we would be terrible at it um, man, we would make a really bad advice podcast, wouldn't we? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I think we'd make a bad advice co- podcast on the auspice of we'd make everything into a joke. Like, it would be bad advice. Like, it wouldn't be, it might not be a bad podcast. Sometimes what you need is bad advice. I disagree with that. I, I disagree with that. I, as a man who has experienced a bad of a lot of bad relationship advice in his time, I could do without bad relationship advice. But sometimes that's what you need. No, no, it's not. Uh, so we talk about cryptids, the paranormal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this week, Brandon, we're going back. We're still staying in America for me. Okay. So we're I like America. From the Black Monk. Um, and we're somewhere in Kentucky. Okay. Now, reports of when this particular cryptid started range from... Some people claim it started in the 1800s. Okay. Some people claim it started in the 1900s. Uh, it's... Huh. Humanoid in appearance with wolf-like features. Brandon, do you know what this week's cryptid is? I'm, I'm almost leaning towards um, the Quiznos demon. Oh my god, the quiz! We, <laughs> I, I want to do a like a, a a bonus episode type thing of yeah. us talking about that Quiznos demon. 
Yeah. <laughs> people, okay, so if you're not, if you weren't alive or, like, cognizant in the aughts and weren't watching Adult Swim every night, Quiznos did this insane ad campaign with these hamsters, these hamster creatures, um, and... I'll never forget Quiznos because of it. Because it was like, the didn't the jingle go like, eat Quiznos subs. They are a dollar off when you bring uh, in a coupon. Something along those lines. Something. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to find out the name of the Quiznos demon. It, I don't. I, I, I looked at They're called sponge monkeys. Um, so I looked it up. Here it is. Oh, no. We love these subs. Subs. <laughs> Because they are they good are to us. And that's not me doing a joke. That's actually how they sound. Yeah. What do you call them? Quizno sponge monkey. Who they is call them sponge, sponge monkeys. I, I don't... I don't know, but someone... There were three, at least three commercials featuring the sponge monkeys. Yeah. Um, Which is horrifying. So basically they're... It's a hamster. It's a hamster with a with... human mouth and a, 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 a top hat, but the human mouth also has some like, um, uh, it has, it has tooth problems. There, yeah, the problems. mouth. There's problems in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I love I love this this article from Huff Post because it is. It is absolutely my feeling. I have never stopped thinking about the Quizno Spung Monkey com- commercials. There's, I'm happy we're actively Googling the same things while holding a conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, uh, that has not left my brain. I think we need to do a full episode just talking about the nightmarish whatevers that these things oh, are. I'm sure there's some, there's some hole we can probably dive in. Their music yeah. stylings by writer Aaron Sullivan... <laughs> Oh, oh, jeez. So, it is not a spung monkey <laughs> or sponge monkey. I don't know if the I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce it as sponge or spung. Spung. I feel like spung might be the I'll better one. I'll say spung. I feel like it's an intentional misspelling. It also might just be sponge and it's misspelled pro- improperly. I don't know. The song um, was improvised by his brother, who oh. <laughs> Uh, I'll say that guy's got some improv skills. He does. Very good improv skills. Uh, so this week's Cryptid, Brandon, and if you've heard of this, I will be legitimately amazed. It's called The Beast of the Land Between the Lakes. I have not heard about this. If you, you've even heard of The Land Between the Lakes, I'll be impressed too. No, that sounds like a... Like... That's, that sounds like a way in which someone could style body hair. Yeah, it it's... Yeah, it definitely does. It definitely does. So, this week, Cryptopedia is creeping back into the world of dogmen. Now, you may say, but John, we haven't covered dogmen, but we have. Uh, in a recent episode, you covered The Beast of Jividan, yep. episode 75. Um, and while technically not a canonical dogman, because usually dogmen tend to be in the United States as a concept. Like, they get la- labeled as dogmen when they're in the United States for some weird fucking reason. And everywhere else, they call them just werewolves. Um, I have seen it on dogmen message board sites. Uh, and since sites reference it, it'd be remiss not to mention the fact that the Beast of Jevedon, episode 75, is sometimes considered a dogman. Um, is it? Sometimes. Huh. That's interesting. Well, because because there's people who think it was a were like, like there's some people who think it's a werewolf still. So and dogmen are effectively werewolves. Well, not. It's more complicated than that, and I'm not going to get into the the intricacies of the taxonomy of dogmen on this episode. <laughs> um, but it's a thing. Um. So instead, this week we're going to be taking a trip to Western Kentucky to what is now known as the land between the lakes. In a departure from my usual style, the demographic and history of the region will be coming later in the episode because it kind of gives away some of the conclusions I reach. Oh, does it? Uh, yeah. So let's launch 
into the first... Let's launch into the graphic account of the Beast of the Land Between Lakes. My lake. body is ready. Between the lakes. I don't know if you're ready. Actually, I'm going to say this up at the front. Uh, there is a trigger warning for this episode because it's incredibly violent, some of the descriptions. Oh, I'm so ready. Um, the second story is going to be incredibly violent. Uh, and if child death affects you, maybe skip it. Uh, so as a piece of bibliographical, bibliographic information, the stories this week are adapted from a reposted article on the demon hunters compendium dot blogspot dot com. Oh, because that sounds like a, a gold mine because the author's website was brought down at some point. Um, I have 2012 here, but I actually found out after the fact that it wasn't 2012. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I'll talk about that later. Um, According to the reproduction, two of the accounts this week come from Jan Thompson and her now defunct website, air, in quotes, Guardian Tales. Uh, also, there's one other one, and I'll I'll reference where that comes from when we get to it. Is it supposed to look bat like? I'm looking at the uh, the screenshot that you've got down here. Um, so I see it, it's Bigfoot with long. It's a Chewbacca with bat face. Yeah. So. It absolutely, if you read the, I'm going to read you the description of the monster, and it does, every other account of it does not look like it, at, look like that at all. That's only, that's literally only Jan Thompson's experience. Okay. That, that looks like. So, we'll, we'll get into it in a second. So, the Beast of the Land Between the Lakes, or the Beast of LBL, in Jan's account, is a local legend spread by old timers uh, who would frequent out the outside of the local grocery store, sitting on a bench and just sharing tales. Uh, the beast was described as a bipedal wolf like creature with a penchant for hunting cattle and other livestock. The creature stood at seven feet tall and had long thick hair covering its body and smelled like a grave. Purportedly so it's Andre the giant. Now that's not fair to Andre the giant. He was French. Okay, that might be more fair to Andre the Giant. <laughs> Purportedly, this smell came from the graves that the beast itself had opened in the region. Okay, so he, he is a scavenger and not an active predator. Is Except he's totally an active predator, Brandon, because he's, mm. he's murdering livestock frequently. What's the word when you hunt both live and scavenge? Uh, that's actually a good question. I don't live know off the top of my head. Hunt live and scavenge. Predator. There's got to be a uh, word for it. <laughs> Active learning. Um, I guess most scavengers are predators too. Oh, okay. Um, Opportunist, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because coyotes, coyotes will... Will scavenge, and polar bears will scavenge. So, did you know domesticated dogs have extra muscles in their eyes compared to their uh, undomesticated cousins, so that they, they can be more expressive? I wouldn't be surprised because Cause, humans cause... kill things that aren't cute. Exactly, exactly, one hundred percent. It. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we we literally selectively bred out all the the least cute dogs, effectively. Yeah, and like if a dog if a dog exists, somebody thought it was cute at yeah. some point. They're they're loyal and act the way they do because we just murdered the ones that were indifferent to us. <laughs> yes, or we didn't let them fuck. Or we didn't let them fuck. We still don't let them fuck. I mean. We don't let them reproduce. Like, since neutering was a thing, how many um, testicles do you think there have been? And what kind of volume would they take up? Oh, my God. <laughs> this, is a, this is a Fermi problem right here. Yeah. Or whatever the, the... Is that... Yeah, it's a Fermi problem. It's one of those ones where you had to, like, estimate, like... Now, how many Manhattans would it take up if you laid all of the testicles that had been removed from dogs out on the island? Yeah. This goes... In, also, it goes into a problem I have to solve at work frequently, which is um, 
uh, if you have a cluster of spheres, what is the volume they take up? Because there is air gap in between all of them. They don't just rest nicely within yeah, yeah. each other. Assume a spherical cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah assume. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's a thing I haven't thought about since high school. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess apparently it was tearing out, tearing up the graves as well. Right. Um it didn't say if they were freshly dug or not, like fresh graves or not. Um, there really weren't that many people in the region. So like, it's weird that it was constantly smelling of grave. Cause like that would imply that a lot of people died in the region. Yeah. Or maybe it, it just it's like a nibbles. fairly rural region. Huh? It, just, it just nibbles. Like it, it exhumes the body and like stores it elsewhere to just kind of have like a nice little, like a little, like a little snack sometimes. You're making assumptions about this beast, and we haven't even gotten into any of its behaviors yet. If I do anything, I make wild assumptions. That's true. That's a fact. Uh, so, bizarrely, and I really... It took me a while to reconcile how this was written. Its tracks were had the shape, have the shape of a man's, albeit with paws in place of the toes. Um... So, so each toe has a full paw? No, 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 no. I'm assuming that the like the toe region, like you know where the pad of your the front pad of your foot is? Yeah, the ball of your foot. Yeah. Um so that bit I'm assuming is just replaced by a paw. And then the rest is a, f- a human foot. Oh, I got. That's, so like the front half I'm is a paw, the back it? half is still like a human foot. It's got both a heel where your heel would be. And then where your the ball of your foot and toes are is paw. Yeah, which makes no literally no sense to me. Like, there's no to me there's no like good reason for that foot structure to exist. Um, but that's what it says. Well, no, because the ankle, the human ankle is analogous to the, uh, like their the cats back and do- bend on a dog. That yeah. like back weird be- like they don't have. Animals don't have backwards knees. That's their ankle. Yeah. So it, it that's that's the thing that it's basically like they're walking on tiptoes all the time. Yeah. It's part of the reason why so fun fun John story time. Um remember Beast Machines? I do. Yeah, remember how Cheetor walked in Beast Machines? Uh do I rem- no, that's not So I remember and the reason I remember is because for most of my life, I have imitated Cheetor's walking style subconsciously. And the way that he walks is on the balls of his feet because he has literal cheetah legs as the bottom half of his body. Yeah. Like, so I would walk on the balls oh, of my feet. Oh. See, that makes sense for Cheetor. For yeah. human John, how how, well, how are your calves doing? <laughs> Have you seen my calves? They're pretty fucking big. Yeah, you've seen them. (laughs) (laughs) That's how you know I'm not lying, because it's like pretty much the only part of my body that is muscular. (laughs) Because I've literally been working it out since Beast Machines came out subconsciously. There's what isn't my sister had a comment about you once, but something like Oh it wasn't about your calves, something like you could like punch through a human or something like that. <laughs> she said she said I look like I could throw a, a punch. I, yeah. I look like I could throw a damn punch or something effect, to that effect. Yeah. Because I'm I am a physically imposing person. You're stuck. Until you start to like if you see me from a distance, I'm physically imposing. And then the second you see my body language or hear my voice, you're like Oh, you're nothing. <laughs> you're a total pussycat. You, no one, you're not gonna fuck with anyone. <laughs> but from a distance, I'm spooky a little bit. You're a sturdy then, human. Then, I would trust. Like, if my car broke down and I saw a lineup of people, I'd be like, "This is the guy I need to push my car." <laughs> and I mean that in a positive way. No, no, that that's totally fair. Because like, you, I feel like you can move heavy objects. I can pick things up and put them down okay. effectively. Yeah, so uh, my my human body is so confusing to me. I feel like I feel like if I wasn't such a nerd, um, I would have absolutely been like a linebacker. But I'm such a nerd. 
Yeah, but if you were a linebacker, think about how many Transformers you could buy. Uh, just probably on a whim. none, because I, I wouldn't be... But the thing is, I wouldn't be... I probably wouldn't be pro. And then I'd probably... And, you know, the NF, they don't like to talk about it, Brandon, but the NFL is really, really prone to brain damage. <laughs> Especially for linebackers. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> it's... It's not called brain damage. It's called CTE because it makes us feel less bad. <laughs> I don't watch sports, so not because I don't. It's not because I have like a weird thing against them. It's just that's not the way I enjoy spend. Uh, that's not the type of uh, recreation I enjoy watching. Uh, so bizarrely, yada yada yada. So its head was that of a wolf, with a long snout and sharp teeth. Um. The beast's eyes were described as radiating red, like one of the hottest fires in hell. Which harkens back to the frequent instances of red eyes in early episodes. Because remember how, like, every episode for, like, the first year yeah. of this it was a red-eyed creature? It's literally in our intro. It's, like, red glowing eyes. I still need yeah. to, like, reach out to anyone that would be a responsible human and be like, how would... Is this a thing, and how does it benefit a creature? Eye shine. There could be eye shine because remember, like I think we talked about that on an episode. I think we talked about it on the Dover Demon episode. Like, eye shine. Where but... Elk can have red eye shine. I think. Yeah, I still don't. And it it could be up to like how the person describes it, but I would not describe eye shine as glowing. I would describe it as reflective. I would say it had yeah, red but... reflective eyes, not glowing. Glowing implies it it, it emits its own light source. Well, but the other thing, too, is you have to remember human memory is fallible. So mm -hmm. you might not remember that there's something that is casting light. Yeah. So, like, if you see a wolf and it eye shines you, that's a thing. Human memory is or, actually incredibly terrible. It's very bad. Um, but, but here's the thing. It's really, really good for what it was, a, it was evolved for. <laughs> to not where... die. It's good at... Yeah. recognizing patterns so that we don't die. Yeah, it's good at recognizing patterns. It's good at basic wayfinding. Um, the way that we create mental maps of the world around us is really, really interesting. And I just read a really good article about something called the knowledge, um, which is a test in London, England, that you have to take to become a black cab driver, uh, where you have to know, like, something like 300 some odd points in London and you have to know how to navigate London without a GPS. Um, and London is, his, is notoriously a difficult city to navigate, but these people can like literally there, there was a famous study that um, I think it was the hypothalamus. No, not the hypothalamus. Uh, hippocampus, the hippocampus of the brain of people who, were London cab drivers was actually larger than people who were not. And as they were learning, they learned their, their brain size actually changed. So it was like the first, uh, the first research that unveiled the fact that our human brain structure could change in adulthood. So to, um, to, to try to emphasize the uh, amount of skill that these drivers have, um, Darren Brown, who is one of my favorite uh, magicians <laughs> in one of his, in one of his live shows, he has a uh, an entire magic trick. Is just him doing what one of these cab drivers do every day, where someone like grabs like a book of every address in England, and then he just like describes exactly where it is. That's the yeah. whole trick. His whole trick is describing what a taxi cab driver does, like the black cab dr drivers do, and it blows oh, yeah, no. people's minds. And that's you just can... an occupation there. <laughs> you can make a hundred k a year easily yeah a cab driver and you get to set your hours and that's pounds that's yeah. not that's not usd that's pounds so um but anywho it had long arms large hands and spindly fingers terminating in dirt cake claws guess it never learned how to wash or do grooming, no. basic grooming uh a howl radiated the Kentucky rural community at night in what was then known as the Land Between Rivers. The guttural howl belied a sense of ravenous hunger, one which local farmers were said to take measures to deter by, like, bringing their cattle in, tying them down. Is this just one... Corey Taylor? Corey Taylor? Yeah, the lead singer from Slipknot. 
Long hair, thin fingers, <laughs> guttural howl. Man, it took uh, it took eighty two episodes for you to you, you to slip in a Slipknot reference. Oh yeah. Um, if anyone has seen my old MySpace page, you would be surprised how long it took me to make that I, reference. Yeah, honestly, honestly. Oh yeah, it, you were you were. Uh, I didn't know anyone else who listened to Slipknot. But you, I might have known people who listened to Slipknot, but the thing is, the amount that you enjoyed Slipknot in the earlier days was such that it eclipsed every other human being who enjoyed Slipknot. I enjoyed it a whole bunch. In fact, if you recall the time we went to the Boo Ball and saw a drunk Master Chief. um, Yeah. uh, I think you were wearing a Slipknot mask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was- The uh, drunk Master Chief was so good. It was the now deceased Paul Gray, uh, his mask. Oh, but yeah, drunk um, Master Chief was fun. He bro- what he he broke his gun and like one of the pieces of armor, I think. And then his yeah. wife was just cool. He fell. He fell over. Like, <laughs> I think he was walking up to the stage for the costume contest and yeah. fell because he was so drunk. <laughs> he had the uh, it was a Pepecura plus resin. I think was the yeah. way that he did it. If I recall so. properly, it was. Um, I think he did he do Prepakura because we spoke to him about it. And that's when I was trying to work on a Fallout Pepakura helmet. And um, if I recall properly, Lilu Dallas, but with the thermal straps, was the one yep. that came in first place uh, for the costume contest because she is naked. And then the... Uh, Pretty much. Yeah, also, not bad. Um, I mean, she was attractive. I, if my memory is correct of that night... She was a very attractive Lilu Dallas. She so. was dancing all night with uh, green, uh, green suit guy, uh, like Green Man Charlie. Oh, God. She was dancing with him, and then I think it was a guy cover- dressed as a disco ball came in second. I know that the... I think I think the dude in the... um, In a Ghostbusters costume placed, at least... Which was yeah. frustrating because I had a Ghostbusters costume too with a really elaborate proton pack. You put a lot of work into the proton pack, and also I, I, I tell me if I'm wrong about how I recall this, but we park in the parking area. Oh, we you're we're unloading. I get out. I've got like my whatever. It was my regular school jacket, which just lent itself to like a Slipknot mask because it had so many pockets. Um. We had another individual with us, and then you, and you were getting into a full, like, jumpsuit, putting on a proton back, and then an individual on the other side of the guardrail, wearing, I believe, an orange, like, city worker's vest, tried to sell us the cocaines? Yes, they did, in fact, try to sell us the cocaines. And then Um, we were both looked at each other, and I was like, we were like, no, we're cool. But then (laughs) we were both like, what about us? Like... (laughs) What about us made him think? Here's a sale. Oh, this is this is a this is a client right here. Yeah, yeah no, I don't know because like I still have that proton pack. My dad and I made it. It's mostly plywood and painted stuff and like yada yada yada. It has an actual Alice pack frame and that backpack. So let me tell you something. That was a heavy proton pack. I believe like it. like it was easily thirty pounds because it was mostly plywood. Um. That backpack was the most comfortable backpack I've ever worn because oh. of the Alice pack frame. I I got that somewhere outside of DC because I wanted, I needed an army surplus to go to an army surplus store. And there was yeah. like, they just happened to have one there. I did it on the way back from a family vacation. I was like, can we please stop here? I need to get this pack frame. <laughs> there, oh man. You know what I kind of want? I mean, the, the, I would... You should just, like, anxiety, like, go to um, the RPF and build a uh, proton pack based off of the RPF uh, findings. Well, that was actually based off the RPF. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh. it was. It was, in fact, based off the RPF. I So, I didn't buy a kit because some people had kits. I was oh, like, I wouldn't buy a kit. I would do what I assume I, you did and, and approximated yeah. everything. Yeah, everything was approximated, and, like, it was, it turned out pretty good. I still have it in my basement. No, it came out good. 
that came out good. Your Proto Man helmet came out good. Well, I will. So the 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 fucking the thing though with the proton pack is my dad definitely did the lion's share of the work on that because he was much better with power tools than I was. Yeah. Um. But my proton, my Mega Man, and uh, my Mega Man and Proto Man helmet and guns, I did completely by myself. Yeah, and so. they came out g- fucking great. Yeah, I I actually really really love my Mega Man helmet a lot. Um, I remember one of my last memories of my grandmother was her watching me do watching me work on it. And she's like, "That's really good, Johnny," or something like that. It yeah. was like such a like. Like, like it was like one of the last lucid moments I remember from yeah. her. So shoot, hey, if you I ever need to work on a project, office. I've got a full workshop <laughs> with a lot of oddly specific things that you have full know. access to. Anywho, we've been derailed enough. I see. Here's the thing. Damn it! As I say, we've been derailed enough. I had a thought, and I kind of want to get back into cosplay. Um, because now I'm at an age where I could be the old men from anime and right? video games, right? So, like, I don't have to be shredded or any of that shit. I can just be the old dude. Right? My 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 problem, because I've had a similar thought, my problem uh, currently with cosplay and anime is, one, I don't own a sewing machine, which I, I'm sure I could get, but it's, two, my beard just doesn't lend itself to most things. Most anime. Yeah. I'll say. There's, you could, you could probably pull off if you were if you were a little whiter, you pull off an Obi Wan or a Gandalf. Gand Obi Wan. You definitely do Obi Wan's beard. I, w- I don't want to shave. I'd have to go like Gandalf. Oh yeah, it's stubbly. It's stubbly. You're right. You're right. See, I don't I don't keep a beard, so it's easy for like, me. Like I can get a weave. I, I can get extensions and go like Dumbledore. <laughs> and I, I think I may have told this to you before, but my uh, expensive wizard outfit that I wear each Halloween is uh because I know it suits me when I go gray. Oh, it's going to be great. When oh, yeah. you when you eventually go gray, that is going to be the perfect outfit. I got like a, a professional doubt. theater robe for wizards. <laughs> it was expensive. You did it's it. got a lot of certif- <laughs> certificates that came with it. You did it you I think you did the uh a Usador the Blue outfit with it one year, right? Yep, it was a Usador the Blue and because that is a too specific reference for a lot of people. I'll just say that I'm a generic wizard from RuneScape. Pretty much, pretty much. And that also suits itself because they're all blue. <laughs> all right. I think we talked about cosplay enough. Yeah. I, I, I won't lie. Uh, if somebody, if I'm gonna say one thing, and then if, if I find out someone is co- a cosplayer. I kind of get a little more attracted to them in general, no matter what kind of cosplay they do. It's weird. I don't. I don't have a good explanation for it. That's like, fair. I don't have any good explanation for it, but like, I don't know. Whatever. So, <laughs> according to the accounts gathered by Jan, sightings of the beast have been happening since the 1800s, with two possible explanations for its origin. Interestingly, both of which are less anthropomorphic. And more human in origin. Huh. So anthropomorphic would mean that it's not a human, but it has human-like qualities. What we're talking about in this case is humans that turned into this creature. Uh, so, in one account, a bastardization of the Skinwalker, episode 19, uh, is presented. The beast Which in this skin telling... skinwalker? Because I think we had two. We had, like, the... the uh... Legit Skinwalker, and then the uh, more common Skinwalker Ranch one. Skinwalker Ranch, yeah, yeah. It's it's more it's closer to the legit Skinwalker, but it's still a bastardization. Gotcha. I'll get into that in a second. So the beast in this telling is a Native American shaman who had been ejected from his tribe and made an outcast for use of magic for evil, for u- his use of magic for evil. Uh, the shaman had the ability to change shape and basically see the episode on skinwalkers because that's like there's a whole bunch of stuff revolving around that and while in wolf form he was killed by warriors of his ex-tribe and local settlers it is said that the shaman cursed the region vowing to haunt the region and those who live there and the beast is supposedly the shaman little little problematic that story listen to the skinwalkers episode for 
more details on why that's problematic. Yeah, the, um, it's not. It's problematic. It's not as wildly problematic as I would have guessed it would have been. Yeah, it isn't. It isn't. I mean, the one thing that I kind of know for a fact is I'm going to show my hand a little bit. I know I, I'm almost positive that this one has nothing to do with reality because the fact that local settlers were working with uh, Native Americans in Kentucky uh, doesn't ring true to me. No. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was trying to think no. of anything positive that happened. No. I was like, no. Uh, once again, fuck uh, Andrew Jackson. Because apparently that's that people like that when we say fuck Andrew Jackson. People, I like it. I like it. But fuck that dude. Yeah. Uh, another account he alleges can that sniff the beast, my taint, which is my new favorite insult. Continue. Sniff my taint is a good insult. Like at the end of a work day. Oh yeah, yeah. No work no, taint. Thank you. That's I, uh, I I I have to do a second cleanup after work. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another account alleges that the beast was originally a settler of European origin who had arrived in the region in the early 1800s. The man was described as having a disease that resulted in madness, which overtook him at night. Uh, chlamydia? Which is interesting. It's, huh? Like syphilis chlamydia? Like there's uh, several chlamydia STDs. Doesn't, chlamydia doesn't cause you to get was madness. It just chlamydia just causes discharge. Syphilis? Syphilis causes madness. madness. That, that, I think that might be what I'm thinking of. Is a thing. Yeah. You also lose your nose. Um. It's interesting, though, that this story has it mentioning night because the beast was said to be sighted during the day as well. But hand wave. Uh, apparently, the disease was spread to his children and his family disappeared with an empty homestead being found in the early 1900s. The implication of the story is that a family of werewolves had populated the region and the beast would be better regarded as beasts. Regardless of origin, the beast is said to have terrorized the populace of the early 20th century. Uh, by accounts, by the accounts presented in the article, the beast was incredibly violent. Rather than simply attacking and consuming bits of the livestock, it is said that the beast dismembered its prey, ripping limbs in, uh, from sockets in an act of exceptional cruelty. So I don't know. That, that's that's pretty metal. I'm not gonna lie. That is. That's also how we eat the turkey. True. True. You, you pop the uh, socket out, and then you, you run the knife along it, and that's how you get a real nice cut without damaging your knife. Uh, I don't want to think about this. I, I, I like to divorce myself. Like, I'd be a vegetarian if meat didn't taste so good. I have I do a limited meat. I still eat meat because meat, but I still feel really bad about <laughs> About the, I saw a video of a cow crying the other day going to a slaughterhouse, and I was like, maybe I should go back to, like, more tofu during the week. Uh, I do. I, I will say this. I love a black bean burger. Like, I don't understand why people need a Beyond Burger, because, like... They're they're fine beyond burgers. burgers are, I feel like um, but, but veggie burgers are already so good. The, the problem with veg, uh, vegan food that people think is the problem is the problem that vegan food had a decade ago when it did suck. Now it's actually delicious. It's, yeah, well, it's higher in sodium. So like, keep that in mind, yeah. but it's all actually delicious. Yeah. Um, to the extent so resi- that, sorry, no, 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 um, my wife now prefers vegan ground beef to regular ground beef, which she never really? tried before meeting me. Yeah. Wow, that's surprising. So, like, there's meat substitutes that people who never tried vegan stuff before prefer over the real thing. Um, that's impressive. Yeah. So, residents were said to have spotted the creature in furtive glances out their windows. It was said that the beast would scratch on the exterior walls of homes, leaving deep gouge marks that would be found in the morning. Ooh, spooky. So... Uh, the first, like, actual tale of the Beast, like, of an event that the Beast perpetrated, um, I can't find conclusive origins for the tale. However, I think it's considered a part of the Beast of LBL canon because it's presented on both the Cryptids wiki page and a Mysterious Universe article oh, about good. the Beast. I so, like the- wait, hang on. Mysterious Universe also kind of 
copy and paste a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm. I'm not shitting on them. They're they're a good resource, but like, I also look for their sources as well and try and take from the actual sources. Um, according to this tale, a group of students from the Murray State University had been camping in the land between the lakes region when one member who had heard something breathing heavily in the darkness, uh, one member uh, had taken a bathroom break in the woods, returned pale and shaking with fear. He claimed to have heard something breathing heavily in the darkness, fearing as though he were being watched. At this point, the campers could hear something circling the camp, snorting and sniffing as it went. Though, through the new bo- nearby bush, I am having real difficulty reading this story. <laughs> Even with the use of flashlights, the campers couldn't see anything. However, the sound persisted. And now this is 73. I forgot to mention that. Uh, so the flashlights were going to be real shitty. Yeah. Uh, like most most consumer grade flashlights were just complete crap. So they weren't LED yet, and the LED flashlight is when they became baller. But before that, just the like the bulb in the flashlight, not so great. Unless you're got unless you're talking like a mag light. Even mag lights, like they were fine. They I were mean, much you could adjust their focus, but they're even just like mag lights. A single or mag- double LED flashlight now, I'd, I'd still consider better than a mag light. Mag lights were only good if you're <laughs> people bought mag lights because. You could just hit people with them real good. Yeah, my dad. My dad was a cop, so we had mag lights because yeah. he just had them from work. Because um, that's what they're. It's so um, he could beat someone with a flat. Like my grandfather. That, yeah. Like the whole. If you talk to any guy over now, I guess like fifty. Like the entire reason they ever owned a mag light it was because you could beat someone with a mag light. If you needed to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have so a sword. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just accept the death that's coming to me. No, I actually do keep my cane next to the bed, though, just in case. I, uh, I don't have anything. I literally, like I said, I literally just accept the death that's coming for me because <laughs> <laughs> that's your strategy is to like remove your underwear and yell, "I accept this." And then, Pretty much. And then that weirds out the other guy, and he just kind of runs. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of my strategy in life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an unearthly howl pierced the night, at which point a pair of red glowing eyes came into view. The campers fled in fear, piling into their Volkswagen bus. Supposedly, the beast was able to grab the bumper before they left the site, temporarily stopping a Volkswagen bus bus in its tracks should the bumper not have been removed like i don't know much about volkswagen maybe the 70s was before everything was just like plastics well, but back shouldn't in, the back bumper in the have, 70s like, everything was like steel yeah okay right? um so it was pretty heavy i'm assuming um with some effort they were able to break free of the beast and return to the their university investigating the bumper after the fact they found considerable damage had been done with gashes gouges and missing metal Oh wow! So apparently it, it yeah. Uh, so the, should know there there are so like there, that's kind of crazy. And with that kind of evidence, like so I don't I'm I, I'm scrolling around, but I don't see the newspaper article that you usually link that has the photograph of the uh, material that's uh, missing or hey, the damaged hey, bumper. Hey Brandon, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, what are you, why are you doing this to me? What uh I I don't know I, I'm I like. You can paste. I'm sure you have it. Like you could just paste it in because you do paste stuff in the the copies as we read them. Sometimes you know, you, you, you know could what, just go ahead and drop what, that in. You know, you're right. You're right. Let me give me a second. Give me a second. I, I have it right uh, here. Yeah, well, I'm sure you had it right. I'm sure you just probably like forgot. Like, oh, yeah, don't forget I like the, the text wrap to make sure that it doesn't like yeah, fuck yeah, up yeah, the spacing. Yeah, yeah. I definitely, yeah. I definitely forgot. I definitely forgot. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, best. Oh, he so, just put in a picture of Dick Butt. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So luckily, no one was harmed during this incident. However, the next victims weren't so lucky. I don't know what you're talking about. That is a link to the article. That, that is a I mean, I'll article. say that bumper is messed up. Yeah, it is messed up. But regardless, in an incident described by Jan Tom- Thompson, um, it had occurred. <laughs> <laughs> the tongue move be hard. 
tongue be wiggle wiggle I, when you just want it to I, obey? Yeah, I, I don't know. My, 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 my tongue hates me today. Uh, an incident described by Jan Thompson occurred sometime in the early 1980s. The story made no appearance in the media, supposedly in an effort to preserve the coming tourist season, and is told from the perspective of two law enforcement officers as a third party. So, like, Jan is the third party recounting a story from two law enforcement officers. Gotcha. Okay. Um, as the story goes, the two officers have been care- called to a rural campground in the LBL region. The campgrounds have been the site of a gruesome murder. Emergency services and coroners have been called from multiple counties and states to assist. The scene had been discovered by a married couple vacationing in the region who were said to have promptly left the region after reporting it. How many coroners do you need? One. Like, multiple coroners. Like, multiple coroners one. seems excessive. You need, you you need, need one. one coroner. You Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to redact that. I'm going to say you need multiple coroners because that is a elected position, not a position that requires education or knowledge. So I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say you do need multiple coroners because you're going to need some. You're going to need someone to take the bodies back. You need someone to take the bodies back. You just need someone to take the bodies back, really. Yeah, you need someone who won't. Um, rule like oh he shot himself in the head twice as a suicide you need you don't you need that's why you need multiple coroners because you need he fell down you need he two fell down people to be like bill shaft. no no bill he fell down an a- elevator shaft and landed on some bullets that i don't understand what you're talking about yeah that's what happens yeah uh so on the campsite there was a parked motorhome doors open with one hanging by the hinge bloody handprints coated the walls of this camper um Like, with one even looking like someone was dragged out the back door of the camper. Uh, Three people. Can I I, I just interrupt real quick? Um, Every every door hangs by the hinge. One hinge. Oh, okay. So one of them had been broken. Gotcha. Broken out. Um, I I, Honestly, the thing that weirds me out more about this is that there were two doors on a camper. Like, on opposite sides. Or was it the, the, like, stacked, the double door where they're, like, stacked on top of each other? No, 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 no. This is, like, 80s, so this is, like, wind streams and such and Winnebago's. And I don't think that they have – I think they usually only have the one door on the side. Because my parents – Or if it's a sufficient – My my parents had a pop-up camper that had the split door where it's, like, one door, but you can open just the top or the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I think one time – a neighbor's pig got out and attacked my dad while he was cleaning out the camper for a camping trip, so that was fun. And I think they called the police on the pig. Hey, Mom, I know you're listening right now. Is that true? That um, am I, Or am I misremembering? <laughs> that um, a pig attacked Dad and then the you called the police and then they didn't really know what to do because it was a pig? Um, yeah, so get back to me on, when's this come out? Monday, so I guess next Saturday. And that would be uh, the 19th? 20th? 19th? I think the 19th, the 18th. The 19th I'm getting the my 19th. snow tires put on, so the 20th. Yeah, yeah so the 19th. The yeah, 19th. so by the 19th, we'll know whether or not a uh, pig attacked my dad. He and, and did get attacked you know by what? a goat, though, once. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's just place this. Let's completely place this in a specific point in time. Uh, that would be Saturday, December 19th, 2020. Yes. We can't we can't do a rerun of this episode. We can't. Um, no. <laughs> so three people. I, I love how we're telling jokes when I'm about to get to the gruesome bits. So this is this by the way is the like kind of triggery bit if you're triggered by extreme descriptions of violence to humans and all that stuff. So just as a warning. Um, three people, two parents and their son, have been found murdered, dismembered, and their parts strewn about the campsite. Investigators determined that the family had been attacked by a wild animal of some kind. However, the bite and claw marks were not consistent with any predators from the region. A clump of long, gray, brown fur was found in one dismembered hand on the site by the coroner. Um, which is impressive that the hand maintained the grip after it being is. removed So, so the part body. of what I'm thinking is, do we know that this did happen for a fact? Because... As far as, like, animal predation goes, it, it's 
Like, the tearing apart of bodies and limbs, I, I feel like, would be less common if an animal was killing to eat. Because it wouldn't just, like, go and then just let stuff remain. If, hey, if, Brandon. Yeah? I got. I posted the link to the coroner's report. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, it's another dick. So butt. yeah, we know it. We know it happened for for a fact. Okay. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> definitely know it happened. Because if an animal is killing to prote- protect, I would assume it would do the. Once it killed, it would leave. Or if it was killing for food, it would kill and then consume, but not necessarily strew limbs ab- about uh, a campsite and then otherwise leave leave it alone. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. Right. It, it it doesn't sound like a thing that an animal would do, at all. Uh, so as if it were a script or perhaps, um, a fictional account, um, an officer at this point finds a collection of young girls dresses in the motorhome, indicating that there was a fourth victim. There was a missing child at this point. A missing child or weird guy. Or a weird guy. So soon after, an officer who happens to be one of the two telling the story, keep in mind, there are officers from multiple states at this site, uh, is splattered by blood from a tree. Do they, um, is that a thing, by the top. way? No, they, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but do they do officer, like, because cro- once it crosses a state, would it not be that state and then FBI, not that state and the neighboring state? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. I don't think that's how it works. Even, like, with... Um, like town versus it, city cops, like yeah, Kingston. Well, yeah, Kingston also like they had to like sign a contract or whatever so that they could move more Kingston police into the town of Ulster because they can't just go in. Yeah, yeah, I I think so. And I imagine um, state to state would be even more so. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that that alone kind of discredits this story, but I also don't know enough about that, and I didn't do research on it. Um. Because, like, if I learned anything from Reno 911, the documentary, um, <laughs> if you cross the border, they just stop chasing you. Yeah, they, they just stop. And not because they were fictionalized cops or terrible at their job. They just stop. Every one of them does. I will say the, n- the number of Reno 911 clips showing up in Reddit, um, funny or unexpected, that are just cropped out of an episode and then reading the comments, they're clearly from people who are younger than you and I who just buy into it. I will admit, when I was a kid, the first time I saw Reno 911, I thought it was real. Um, because I had no... I had no instinct for satire. I still don't. It takes a lot for me to, to realize that something's satire sometimes. Yeah. Um, well, other people but, too. I do see Onion articles posted to Facebook as if they are fact. Well, that's part of the reason why I do research. Yeah, is because I know that I'm predisposed to believing shit. So I'll Google something to make sure that it's true. Yeah, and like actually do research on it. Like not like intensive research, but like you know a fact check. I'll do yeah. fact checking. Yeah, find multiple sources and <laughs> check their v- validity and see, you know go from there yeah yeah you know the one of the reasons that one of the like founding principles of this podcast or something i I don't know i don't know um (laughs) so uh guy gets splattered by blood from a tree drop investigating the source yields the missing child who had been taken to the tree consumed and then as the author puts it laid gently on a branch (laughs) (laughs) yeah as one does yeah. Um, when the relief officers came, those leaving were instructed to tell no one of the events from that evening. The narrator, Jan, then closed the story by saying that the officers had appeared to vis- vis- visibly age after that night. Like, future interactions with her, with them, like, they'd gone a little gray, been a little more depressed, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, for their act to be so a bad. Lot. Uh, uh, share opinions. Sorry, I've been holding it for so share long. Share opinions. I just drinking so much tea oh brandon you're killing me so yeah i i cut a lot of stuff out of that um there was a lot of very flowery uh text it was very um what's the word i'm looking for uh gratuitous it almost read as though somebody were writing a script for a movie of some kind 
And that's not an implication. It just is literally what it was. It was like someone doing a creative writing project of some variety. Um, I don't know if Brandon's going to li- He usually listens to the episodes, doesn't he? What can I say? Is there something I could say to really mess with him here? Um, hmm. I'm not thinking of anything. I'm trying to think of something that would upset him. And I've got nothing off the top of my head, which is upsetting for me. Um, I could make a joke about Star Trek, but I don't. I don't hate Star Trek. I can't. I can't say anything bad about Star Trek. That would be. That would be just be mean. I'm too nice. I'm coming back. You're coming back. Oh man. Whew. See, the problem with making concerted effort to drink more water is that you do have to pee more. That is true. That is true. I don't know if any of what I just said was at all good. But it hey, probably I was. It. Listen, anything that keeps me from having to edit things is always good. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so that's the end of the first account. In her second account, Jan had a first-person exp- perspective of the creature. In the summer of 1978, Jan had been staying with her aunt near the Land Between the Lakes region. Her cousin, Joe, had been exploring the woods on his dirt bike one day when he peeled out of the woods at top speed, nearly crashing it into the porch Jan had been on with her younger cousin. Frantically, Joe explained what had happened. Very dangerous. Never speed through the woods. My dad got injured very badly that way on a dirt bike. Yeah, you don't You do not do that. You don't do that. That is why As somebody who's... I've, I, my dad got hurt. He got hurt, hurt in the woods on dirt bike. And then that is why growing up, I have never been on dirt bike or snowmobile. I quadded through the woods and I luckily was never hurt. But did you know, you remember that time that Mike flipped the quad? I do remember that time Mike flipped the quad. Apparently that caused permanent damage. Yeah, he flipped. (laughs) It's it's not funny, but he did flip a quad. No, it's not. I'm I'm doing the talk clap thing. He did flip a quad. On just regular ground driveway. <laughs> yes. Like, that um, wasn't, like, crazy terrain. Well, the problem is he walked it off. He really should have probably gone to a hospital after he that. He probably. I think he went to a chiropractor years after to get, uh, he, get yeah, that Yeah, and they, they said that his back was, like, completely fucked up. Yeah. I feel bad. I feel bad because that was my birthday party that that happened at. <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of fun at your birthday parties, by the way. <laughs> my birthday parties were weird. We played a lot of Halo. We played a lot of he- Halo. I met, met a lot. Of, I've met people who I've known for the majority of my life now at your birthday parties. I my 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 home was a weird nexus point because I had a bunch of people from Kingston and a bunch of people from Rondo. Rondo yeah, meet there. So well, the the school district line was um, more or less the road. I'm not going to say specific road names, but if you know where Mike's parents live. Yeah, that road. It was like it was near. He was very nearly in our school district. Yeah, like if you're before that road, you were in Ronda. If you were after that road, you were in Kingston, and that's what it was. Yeah. So, um, but as a result, I am more. It's weird because I have more friends from Kingston than I do from anywhere from Ronda Valley because I hated most of the people in our class. That's fair. That is um, very fair. <laughs> So most of my friend group lives in Kingston still to this day, which is an absolute fact. Now that I think about it, I have maybe two or three people who I'm friends with who don't live in Kingston. <laughs> and when I say friends, I mean like actual friends, not acquaintances. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of acquaintances that live everywhere, but like people who I would routinely hang out with and have an interest in hanging out with. Yeah. Um, it's more or less Kingston. I just want to anyway. get a vaccine so I can fucking hang out with people again, man. Yeah, I because I live alone and I don't go anywhere for work. I've been a little bit more lax with hanging out with people. That's fine, though. I'm not. <laughs> but I'm like also not. I'm I'm usually wearing my mask and all that shit. So I'm like doing social distancing and stuff like that. There's and like I've I picked I've picked the people who I consider a part of my group yeah and those are the people that i regularly go around with oh yeah i go around with anyone so and part of the re i I won't go into i'll I'll talk to you about it after the thing um so (laughs) this is what joe said it grabbed me look at my leg 
I don't know if that's at all a Kentucky accent, <laughs> that, whatever. Joe's- that sounds like a shot straight out of Mountain Monsters, by the way. <laughs> uh, Joe's screen, making us jump with alarm at the sound of his voice. We looked down at his le- Levi's, and we saw a scratch mark going across his right thigh. The marks were like a bear's claw rake. Not those caused by branches or sticky brushes. There was a definite wide pattern of a paw print. It walked on two legs, his voice started, startled us again, as if he was trying to tell us the story in between his huge gulps of care. He was frightened beyond belief, and the bits of pieces of what he was saying, with ex- striving with extreme effort to tell us, coming out in large syllables that filled us with both with the same dread. It was following me through the woods, along the path from the old sawmill. Harry, it was so hairy. Oh my god! <laughs> it was Uncle Harry. That's straight out <laughs> That's of. That's not in the quote. Ah, uh, mountain monsters. And also, I think this um, episode in particular contains the most quotes out of like our intro <laughs> than any of our other episodes. What do you mean? Just of quotes, because our intro is just quotes from like news interviews. Oh yeah, yeah. Just like red glowing eyes. I think there might be one about um, like there's definitely got to be stuff about like. Height, hairiness, being it's bipedal. Like feet tall, like, big as they can be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, continuing what Joe was saying. And its snout was so long, and it walked on two legs. It ran on two legs. His voice was sputtering, slowing. His eyes were still wide, and I could see the pulse of his heartbeat throbbing under the skin of his temple. What? Yeah. Um. So Jan, Jan Thompson has some very flowery... Uh, language. Yeah. Um, it was at this point of time that a wolf's howl could be heard from the hill Joe would come over with the dogs in the pen barking and staring at its crest, the crest of the hill. Jan recounts it as initially appearing to be a wolf at the edge of the woods until eventually the silhouette could be better discerned as one of the biped, one of bipedal nightmare. Um, interestingly, Jan described the creature as having black eyes, which she described as two sockets of ebony oil shining under a magnifying lens. Um, okay, so this directly um, contradicts, contradicts the red yeah. glowing eyes, or at least eye shine, especially yes. with shining oil under a magnifying glass. So she's yeah. at least discounts. That says the eye shine is black, is her statement, basically. Yeah, that's her saying that the red glowing eyes is not a real thing. Yeah. Um, but she also is the person who wrote the description of the beast previously. <sighs> so my description of the beast literally comes from her description. Yeah. So um, I'm not taking it from another source. and Because most of the source for this episode is... The Jan Thompson accounts. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, But yeah. Also, like, I didn't... I was really confused. Because, like, the storytelling was very overly flowery. So it was kind of hard to follow some of the details. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess the light flipped on. There was, like, a light that flipped on. Like, a motion light. that Which is weird. Because I don't know how... I don't know when motion lights were invented. And this takes place in 78. So I don't know if motion lights were a thing in 78. And I just realized that I forgot to look that up. Um, but it apparently it was dark enough that the light from the, the the light shining on it was enough. Like they needed the light to see what it was like features. So, were. so ni- which means- 1950. So, so we're, we're within motion sensor times. Okay. It's, it's within, it's within the realm of it being something that is commercially available. Okay. Um, But she needed a light to see it, which to me is weird because that means Joe was riding through the woods in like twilight hours. Again, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Uh, So the children ran out of the house in fear, locked the door and hid under a bed. The beast was said to have successfully smashed in a window, although ultimately failed to enter the home. Jan's uncle later that night told the kids not to enter the woods in response to the day's event. Supposedly, he had entered the woods himself to check things out, only to find several pits that had been dug along the sides of the path. These pits had been filled with animal carcasses and bones, leading to the old sawmill that Joe had first seen the beast at. Additionally, holes were dug into the sides of the bluff that overlooked the old mill, which supposedly were big enough to ho- like house a human male, like an adult human. 
This um, seems like a really good horror movie. Like, not as written in here, but, like, that the concept of an old sawmill and then, like, bodies being hidden around in, in that. Like, this seems like a really good setup for a, a horror movie. Extremely poorly written, but a really great yeah. idea. So there's a follow-up to the story that takes place years later, but honestly... I've just given Jan way too much lip service on this podcast. <laughs> um, so if it's not obvious, I don't believe in the Beast of LBL. The, I don't believe the Beast of LBL is real. Every single portion of this story is trophy nonsense. Um, the 1978 story is basically just a reskin of the serial killer urban legend. You know, the one where you find the, the yeah. hook on the on the. This the, seems like an door. amateur ho- like right up like an it's like someone wrote a spooky time story yeah yeah um the 1980s story is a schlocky horror script like it's literally beat for beat written as a horror movie and if you read the full story it is literally a horror movie script if you're like like or like a no sleep um Mm -hmm. article or story uh and jan's personal experience has glaring inconsistencies that we've already pointed out Namely, the eye thing. Yeah. Um, but not to mention, the timing of the story was co- very confusing, very poorly like explained. Um, why did none of the dogs get killed? That is by a this good creature? question. Uh, that is supposedly like an absolutely ferocious, ravenous monster. Because the dogs, from it what only I likes read, humans. weren't murdered. It's not yeah. a cannibal. Only humans. But it, it also eats wildlife. And like... The part that I cut off was talking about how the forest was completely silent and, like, nothing lived in it. Birds didn't even fly over it. There's no uh, such there thing no as a insects. silent forest. Just, yeah, just so, so people who don't live in the woods know where I grew up living in a place where we had, like, lots of woods. You had woods around you, even though, like, there, there's some, some road in that. The, there's wood sounds. There's, it's yeah. never quiet. Like there, it's, it's never just silent. Wood sounds. The same way as you live in a city. Like there's city sounds. Like you always expect to hear. Like now, I don't hear cars or trains when they go by because I live in the city. But if I go somewhere not like that, it's oddly quiet. You notice it. You, you notice it. The same when, way if you move from we... the woods, there's like you actively don't hear deer in the woods, bugs, because you, you can just hear the woods full of bugs at night. Because because your brain is actually really good at filtering out. Uh, common sounds yeah as a it is literally an evolutionary advantage to be able to filter out common sounds and be able to identify abnormal sounds yeah um so funny story around that when my family moved from kingston to uh like where we lived afterwards yeah um my mom like had difficulty sleeping because the train sounds weren't around anymore same with my mom Exact same yeah. thing with my mom when she moved in, because both of we both grew up in different ports parts of the same street. You lived farther from Kingston than I, my, I, I did. Yeah. Growing up, um, my that's a weird thought when you think. My about mom it. was from Kingston. It is a very weird thought that we like we lived on the same street, just like fifteen very. years, like you know, a few minutes down the road. Um, yeah. But my mom was from Kingston, and she had the same thing. We're like she had a hard time sleeping because there was no train sounds. Mm-hmm. And uh, the same thing with my dad when they were dating, when he would uh, be in Kingston, he would have a hard time sleeping because he couldn't hear, like, the woods, which have their own sound. Yeah. It's it's really weird. It's a bizarre thing. Oh, yeah. It's cool, but it's so bizarre. It's, it's cool. So, so bizarre. I had a hard time sleeping when I moved here because um, I wasn't used to having neighbors. Um, in the sense that I have now, meaning that if someone, like, several houses down closed a car door in my head, I was like, that's in the house. Because yeah. you don't hear a door close unless the door's in your house, because that's how, sent, like, that's just for, you know, most of my life how it worked. <laughs> oh, jeez. Gosh. Um... But yeah, so so like the other thing too is like why were there pits dug on the side of the thing when literally in no other story did it the beast think that it needed to hide stuff and Yeah, I'm going to say there weren't. Um yeah. that that's an incredibly unique thing unless you're a giant squirrel to dig a human-sized pit. Um so apparently people on the internet at the time uh were purportedly not on board either. 
uh, because she took the story down after people accused her of being lying, liar and a fraud. Um, through the Wayback Machine, it appears her accounts were published sometime near or before 2004. I actually figured out when the thing went up. Um, and it appears the story was taken down sometime in 2010 or 2011. Uh, okay. Invest- investigating Jan, I couldn't find any conclusive information about her as a real person, surprisingly. Uh, in fact, the only ner- oh. noteworthy Jan Thompson is a Christian romance novelist on Amazon. Her about section is hilarious enough that I decided to include it in this episode. That's amazing. So is Jan perhaps like a nom de plume of, I assume, a um, someone with male p- pattern baldness, although that doesn't say anything about your character, um, like taking pictures of some girl he found online and just building like <laughs> something around her as an author? Which I don't think. Well, well is so the thing, thing is, that happens. The thing is, uh, Jan Thompson would be in her like nearly sixties. I want to say mm. uh, fi- late fifties, late fifties. Um, and the woman Jan Thompson, the picture is not at all appropriate for someone that age. Yeah. Um. So. USA Today best-selling author Jen, Jan Thompson writes Christian coastal city and beach town romance with flavors of women's fiction. Christian romantic suspense with elements of mystery and inspirational international techno thrillers with threads of sweet Christian romance. <laughs> Jan's books are for readers who enjoy stories of faith, family, and friends. Um, and I, I included a totally not edited picture of one of the covers of one of her books. <laughs> yeah. uh, totally not edited. Totally not edited. Uh, regardless, Jan is not the only component of the story that makes it reek of falsehood. It also has to do with the demographics of the region, which I deliberately held off on until now because <laughs> of what I'm about to say. So, as alluded to earlier in the episode, the land between lakes, the lakes was originally known as the land between river, the rivers. The region was seized by the Tennessee Valley Authority via eminent domain to produce hydroelectric dama- dams that would flood portions of the region, thus creating lakes. Uh, so, land between two lakes, because two rivers became lakes, basically. Yeah. Um, so, it forced families in the region to be rehomed to other locations. In 1963, the region was officially designated as a recreation area, which allowed camping, hiking, hunting, and other attractions of the outdoorsy variety. Locals, whose families were displaced, actually find the story of the beast, the beast of LBL to be offensive. <laughs> oh. um, because it's not a portion of their folklore and heritage. David Nickel, who originally lived in the area before the removal, dismisses the story outright. When somebody makes up something like that for fun, or I don't know, profit, and tries to say that this was part of the Between the Rivers folklore, that's just further polluting the truth of what was here. We did have a rich culture and a rich heritage living here between these two rivers since the late 18th century, and it's sort of disturbing to have someone come in, making up things, and then ascribing it to us. Likewise, the U.S. Forest Service Public Affairs Specialist Carlin Lewis has the following to say about the beast. We have no evidence, records, documentation of any validated sightings of the beast. Some of our staff have worked on the land between lakes, the lakes for many years. A lot of them know every nook and cranny. They haven't seen anything that would point back to a beast existing. A movie is in the works, and it looks and sounds terrible. The producer, Lee Vervoot, appears to be a total scumbag, too, in the same company as the infamous producer, Charles B. Pierce, of Baki Creek fame. Although this film lack, lacks the novelty of the other cryptid-based horror flick, he writes off the local disdain for the film. I think it's a case of jealousy because they're not the ones doing it, and I saw an opportunity to create a story, and I'm going with it. Overall, the Beast of LBL has little to no merit as even a piece of convincing folklore. In reality, it's just a worse Slenderman, Rake, or Siren Head. Um, because I think it's a oh, prototype. Worse siren positive. head. So okay, let, 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 let me let me let me do a little a sprinkle sprinkle in here. So I did. Mm-hmm. There is a documentary. Fe- with, it's not a documentary with Jan as the headliner called "Hunt the Dog Man." And what? 
And you can watch it on Amazon uh, or you could buy the DVD for $19.50. And it has four reviews. It's got five stars, four reviews. The interesting thing about this movie with Jan as the headliner of, of uh, uh, characters in it is that they are all very long <laughs> reviews, all four of them, that all give five stars with the exception of one four star, that even when they name people, they, they're they clearly written by people involved with the film because they say, this is one intriguing piece of documentary filmmaking. John J- John Johnson of Grendel Films is a... And they, they're listing people's credits in the comments. Like, it's all the... Like... Oh. <laughs> like, it's clearly people involved with the film leaving five-star Amazon reviews on the film in order to get it um, some traction. Oh, my God. I didn't find that. I, also, I, maybe I did find it. I just didn't want to spend a dollar to rent it. <laughs> Two dollars to rent You it. can't rent it. You have to purchase the DVD. <laughs> oh, God. Are you serious? It's, it's a fucking thing. No, there is, there is a, there is a web, there is a digital version of that. Oh, is costs, there? Oh, okay. It costs two bucks to rent. Yeah, and probably I not worth it. I think I found the DVD version and I was like, I don't think I'm going to get anything out of this outside of. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hunt the Dog Man, a documentary film, high strangeness in Western Kentucky. I think this is the film that like it reached like this story was introduced in basically like it was one of those things where it was like not known about. And then this film came out type thing. Yeah. I, it was one of those things I really didn't care. Um, but I will say the, the beast of LBL movie looks fucking terrible. And it also sounds completely awful. Like I, I think I had, I think back in high school, we had better sounding, uh, sound quality and that was in 2007. <laughs> oh, that's definitely a plus. Yeah. I Yeah, it it's it's real bad. The Beast of LBL movie on IMDb has three cast members. Amazing. And one producer. Does it have Egg Helms? Uh, I see Lee Ver- Verfoot, Lee Martin Collins, Gerard Strocher, and, and Lee Verfoot also as the producer. So that tells me that you haven't watched Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun yet, because I made a very, I made a big Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun reference. No, is that the thing on Netflix that has the really funny, like, trailer? It's got, it, it, it the, the, op- it might be playing Everything's a Drum, the song? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have not watched it, but I've watched the trailer several times before deciding. I'm on my third watch through. <laughs> is it that good? Um, I love it. Cowdoy is my new god, so deal with that. Kitty. Kitty. Oh. Um, so yeah, so the that show I watched it one day. Then I binged it again that same day. I'm trying to get purrs on the love microphone. It so much. Huh? I'm trying to capture the purrs. I don't know if it's going to come in. I can hear it in the monitors, but I don't know if people hear my cat purr. This is the best listening content. Here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun. I have to watch big, that. Big, big, big recommendation from John. <laughs> um, okay, like, I'll have I to check that out. I can't recommend it enough. Um, so, yeah. Definitely check it out. I've been watching all their YouTube videos. They're hilarious. Do they have a um, channel? They do. Auntie Donna. Uh, that's that's the fuckboy anthem. They're the people who did that. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a really great bit with Ellen DeGeneres, not actually Ellen DeGeneres. It's Broden, the bald man yeah, pretending to be Ellen DeGeneres. And it's hilarious because he has the deepest voice ever. Uh, so I won't spoil anything, but check that out. We'll probably talk about it in the future. Um, so, uh, I guess it's time to do plugs. 
So uh, our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Instagram is at CryptopediaCast.com. Twitter is the same. Uh, if you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon, and it's your turn to thank our jackalopes, Brandon. Yes, thank you, Clay Sinclair, who um, and I, you could probably what? I want to I want to plug his Twitch stream. Oh, did um, what is? Do you have the link to that? I was going to mention uh, it, but I don't know the direct link. Se- was it Sicarius? Um, twenty three. Is it Sicarius twenty three? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that copy and paste coming in here. Oh, yeah, live Google edits. All right, there, there we is. go. Yeah, thank you to Clay Sinclair. You could watch at Twitch TV slash Sicarius S I C A R I U S two three. Uh, play with them occasionally. It's always fun. Uh, John dies a lot, and I guess just well, you get me killed. Messes with I don't get you killed, and he just uh, I killed. bargain with the ghosts. There's a difference. Um, I have better communication are... skills. There is. There is. Um. There is an episode with Brandon and I. There is like a stream with Brandon and I that's on his YouTube, which I think is. I believe there's like two. That. I think both of them are up. Um, if you yeah. find his YouTube channel, uh, it says like it, in the f- he mentions Cryptopedia in the in, in, in the comments if you're interested. Yeah, because we're terrible at plugging our own podcast. Well, Brandon's especially terrible. I am especially terrible. Um, thank you to Marty Von Party as a Patreon member, Bird Schneider, who um. I'm going to say he's got Schrodinger's marrow at this point in time. I mean, I just don't know. Does yeah, he have it? Does he not? Point. Who knows? And Jonathan Shepard, as well as Thomas Granger. And I'd also like to throw in a free plug for uh, the Lenwood uh, Sharp because he keeps putting the good, good posts within the yeah, uh, yeah. the Facebook group. And he also adds uh, or he tags he, like some of the photos. He'll put um, Cryptopedia in there to, to flag us as like a free Thanks. use uh, thing. I think he um, has a new site. He, I, I remember him he, following the Cryptopedia podcast, but I don't have it up right he now. He does. So. so his website is The Lumberwoods. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it is The Lumberwoods, um, uh, which is, I mean, I, I've been poking around there, try, trying to snooping, sniffing, sniffing, snooping. sucking it all in to see if we can. What are you, the beast between the two lakes? Yes. Sniffing around. Or a ghoul, because I've been watching lots of Tokyo Ghoul. Actually, that's why it's a little bit uh, later today, is because I watched two episodes of Tokyo Ghoul before I got out of bed. Is that is that at your sister's recommendation? It's at her recommendation, but she, I'm most of the way through season three, so it's not... Oh. It, it That means I actually like it, not just I watched some because she okay. recommended it. I remember, I remember uh, when she first got into anime and manga... Her first like thing was the polar bear and seal manga. Oh yeah, well she loves that. <laughs> I just showed my nephew um, uh, My Hero Academia for the first time, oh. and uh, he got three episodes in. He digs it. That's a that's yeah that's a good one. I forgot they say real curse words. Oh, they do. Yeah, they said sh- uh, all might um, the first time. So he's flying through the air, and then he, like, bleeds from the teeth a little bit before he deflates. He goes, shit. And then, you know, my nephew looks at me, and he goes, he said a bad word. And then at some point, someone says asshole, and he's laughing. He goes, he said anus, which means he knows, like, it's a bad word to not say. He knows the replacement words for him. So, like, I'm not that worried about it. I know he's not going to run around saying stuff that's bad. Yet. Yet. Uh, did you say the the last name there? Did you read the whole thing? Jonathan Shepard and Thomas thing? Granger. Did you read the whole thing though? The the parenthetical there. Thomas Granger hung in 1642 for buggery with a mare, a cow, two goats, um, diverse sheep, which is just a lot of sheep. They're, they're more than they could have counted, which is mm-hmm. impressive. Two calves and a turkey, which I have to say, that's the most impressive one of the the lot. If I have to throw in it my two cents, is. Um, I mean, you, you, like, because of all those things, well, the goats are pretty impressive too, because they're they're they're. I have to say, the turkey is the hardest to catch because as they don't fly most of the time, they can fly into a tree from the ground, so they have that ability. They also have a cloaca and a turkey head, so I'm gonna say like. Point bonus points for effort on that because I'm not really sure really like as far as physics goes, geometry, like how 
really just how, like, one, you get it before it goes into the tree, but then after that, you've got to really um, strategize, I guess, is the right the right way to, to mention it. And um, you know what you know what I hate? Yeah. When you said cloaca, the first thing I thought it was monster mu- musume. <laughs> I um that I had a realization that I make so I had a realization that there is an upsetting amount of episodes that I've covered now that have to deal with anthropomorphized things. There is here here's the other thing cuz um Erica like she's not opposed to anime it just can't be violent and then she made some comments about seeing how some of the the individuals look in uh Tokyo Ghoul. Um, I canceled my VRV and Crunchyroll subscription just because I, if I'm not actively on a streaming service, I just take it down. So once I finish Tokyo Ghoul, then I have to go back to Crunchyroll to like get back onto my, my kick because it's usually in the winter times. So I'm excited to introduce Monster Mouse Hume to her. I, I don't ever want a body pillow, but... If I ever got a body body pillow, it would be of Mia because there's like a body pillow that's like six body pillows just strung together in a pillowcase for her. <laughs> Bless you. It, Have you seen that? Is she the snake one? Her, she's the snake girl. So I got she, it. For her snake tail, it's like six body pillows, which is hilarious to me. I am um, Googling that. It's oh, two wow. eyes, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's That big. actually looks... It actually looks comfortable. It's seven meters long. It looks slightly comfortable. Yeah. Not like there's enough where you could like. There's a reason I have a lot of pillows because I like to have my head like I like to have one under the neck, and then a smaller one under the head so I'm not directly on the mattress, and then I also am not against having one by like a knee or an ankle, and this one looks like it could actually do all of those things, but with one pillow. It the pillow cover itself is a hundred and nine dollars though. Or a hundred dollars easily. It's a it's a bit expensive. It's a bit expensive. Um. So anywho, we've got a Facebook group. People join it. I think we had a new person join the other day. We did have a new person join. We did. I don't remember their name off the top of my head though. Um. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. If you have any monster requests or stories, send them in. (laughs) Um, We definitely get to them. Well, we've only had one. We've only had two requests ever, and that was that was the Bridgewater Triangle, which we did, and the uh, uh, the, the that which must not be named. That which must not be named, which we do have a uh, slot for in our spreadsheet. It has been slotted. It has been slotted. I'm still. I'm still slightly looking for somebody to interview about that because i want to actually do it justice oh yeah so even though right now you're listening to episode 82 when episode 68 comes out you'll know what we're talking about Uh Uh (laughs) uh-huh this is technically our 81st episode technically technically but 68 is forever going to be the cryptid that would that must not be named and uh, 69, because nice, nice, is Tittymon. And did I do that on purpose? Yeah, and I'm kind of proud of that. It worked. Well, we, we actually, uh, we actually, because I think something happened that I couldn't, oh, that was when I was applying to the PhD program. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't do an episode. And rather than go, Brandon switching over the even numbers, we just went with it. We went straight to 69 because it was Titty Mond. It was very funny. Yes. <laughs> there's some there's some production notes for you. So have fun with that. Oh, yeah. That's your that's your uh, reward for staying for the plug section. That usually goes long. Yeah. This, I mean, yeah. We Our intros are long. Our uh, plugs are long. And I'll, I'll go ahead and say our middles and tangents are long. <laughs> Everything's long. Everything's long. Hey, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com, which I, a coworker just found, which is interesting. Uh, my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at cryptobrandon, capital C, capital B. 
My Instagram is Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. His email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I did not see him at Hannaford this week. And do do, do, do we plug the, the Discord? Oh, I forgot to plug the Discord. Yeah, there's a Discord server. Um, I have it in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, a link to join it. We had a recent joint person join. I think they were called the World or something. They were called the World. Um, I think they're a lurker. Uh, not to call you out the World, but listen, I said uh, welcome and you lurked. Brandon, <laughs> you're calling them out. I am. Uh, <laughs> it's a bunch you're of weirdos. Calling I'm out. explicitly calling them out. It's a bunch of weirdos. We've got the. the uh, I mean, lurking is totally fine. We've got the same. It's, it's a. Let me let me say it's a bunch of weirdos in the affectionate form of weirdos, not the weirdos form of weirdos. Uh, yeah. Oh no, it's the affectionate form of weirdos. It is the like the same. I know we've got lurkers, and it's the same chain of people. But I get excited every time I wake up in the morning and just see like that I've got five Discord messages or whatever. <laughs> And it's, it gets it gets weird sometimes, and I like I, I come out, I come back, and I'm it f- oh no, I love the it weird. forces me like, to Google things I've not Googled before. No, I love the weird, and I love coming back from whatever and seeing like just bizarre ass shit because it's great. Oh yeah, it's fucking phenomenal. It is. Um. Anywho, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are gonna get weird. Hmm.